Every fun gadget you see out there has a little bit of control and automation. What we are trying in this lab is to use those fun stuff, advance them a little bit to deal with some of the real world problems. Everything from a small toy robot can be augmented to act like a driverless car, a drone for monitoring our surroundings, our environment, and to find some applications that can solve real world problems. My name is Homayun Najaran. I'm an associate professor at the School of Engineering at the University of British Columbia Okanagan campus. To work with this kind of technology is to combine a little bit of fun, a little bit of education, a little bit of literature, and to be on top of the state of the art in terms of hardware. And in the end of the day is to sit and scratch your mind and write the software, the algorithms that need to run the hardware, all the instruments that you have put together. In this lab, we work on control and automation. We are not very uh, peculiar and fussy about uh, what kind of applications we are going to work. That uh, allows us to work with a wide range of uh, industries, industry partners, academic researchers. So anything that can be automated, we are involved in. If there is any piece that is dull, dirty or dangerous, well, we can remove that need for human being in it and automate the system to be rid of the human intervention. If you really want to do a good job, you have to make sure that you are on top of the state-of-the-art hardware. If the technology used when I did my PhD 10 years ago is of no use, it's obsolete already. Even the hardware which was used two years ago is no good anymore. Because it's progressing, you can do much better things. As new technologies come, it opens the horizon for you. So you need to be on top of what is available there. In addition to core robotics and unmanned system research, we also work on microelectromechanical MEMS applications in my lab. And the area that we would like to focus on is microfluidics. And microfluidics has enabled us to have desktop and benchtop chemistry and biochemistry research in a very small scale. That has a lot of advantages, one, to make the reaction faster, second, to use much less expensive samples when we are running our experiments. It's a very fast-moving engineering discipline, and nobody can say what's going to happen. But what we can do is that just stay on top of the things and make sure that our research is relevant to today's needs.